An easy way to combine vectors in two dimensions is to put them onto a coordinate system. The coordinate system we used is called the ij plane. This i has nothing to do with the square root of minus 1. This horizontal axis or x axis is referred to as the i axis. The vertical axis or y axis is referred to as the j axis. The idea is that any vector in this plane can be built up from two unit vectors. Unit vector i, which points to the right horizontally, and unit vector j, which points upwards. Now unit vector i is sometimes shown with a little hat on it, but in many books an arrow is used, so I'll use the arrow. Unit vector j is this vector here. By unit vector I mean it's, it's, uh, their length is 1. For example, suppose we have this vector v, and we want to write it in terms of these two unit vectors, i and j. Well, this vector v is actually pointing to the right. It's a horizontal vector. Its magnitude is 2. You can see the distance from the table is 2. Now, what we do is we move this vector down parallel to itself, so its tail is at the origin. So now v is here. And we write it in terms of i and j. In this case, v is equal to 2 times vector i. You see, if we take the unit vector i and multiply it by 2, its length goes from 1 to 2. But multiplying by a scalar, as I explained in the previous video, doesn't change the direction. It just doubles the length of the vector. So vector v is equal to 2i. So that's what we do for all vectors, no matter where they are. If we have a vector down here, we imagine moving it so that its tail is at the origin, and we name it in terms of its i and j components. Here is another example. We have this vector w. It's pointing vertically down. Its magnitude is 3. Its length is 3. We want to get it in terms of its i and j components, so we move it so that its tail is at the origin. And if we do that, vector w will look like this. So you can see that it's actually a multiple of vector j. Vector j is pointing upwards. But if we reverse the direction of vector j, we get vector minus j. This vector here is minus j. That's got by multiplying vector j by minus 1. If we multiply by minus 3, we'll have vector w. Now, let's take this vector u. This is not a horizontal or v vertical vector. Let's see it in terms of its i and j components. So, you have to imagine moving it so that its tail is at the origin. This vector has a component that's two units horizontal component that's two units long and a vertical component that is three units long. So here is vector u. It's been moved parallel to itself. I just went across two and down three. The coordinates of this point here are two comma minus three. Now we want it in terms of vectors i and j. Well you can see that if we add this vector here onto this vector here, we will get vector u. We can add this horizontal and this vertical vector by the triangle law, which was covered in the previous video. So what is this horizontal vector here? Well, it's 2 times unit vector i. So u is equal to 2 times vector i. and we have to add onto it this vertical vector. Now what is this vector here? Well, vector j points vertically upwards. It has a length of 1. It's a unit vector. If we switch it over, we have vector minus j. So this would be a vector minus j here, this vector. But we want 3 times vector minus j. So that gives us vector minus 3j. So we have 2i plus minus 3j or just 2i minus 3j. We can also get it from the coordinates of the head of the vector. 
So we're taking any vector in the plane and we're using the triangle law to write it as a sum of horizontal and vertical vectors. The horizontal vector is a multiple of unit vector i. Unit vector i points in the positive x direction. The vertical vector is a multiple of unit vector j. Unit vector j points in the positive y direction. Let's look at this vector v. It is 2i plus 1j. In other words, the coordinates of this head of the vector are 2, 1. x is 2, y is 1. It's the sum of two vectors. This vector here, which is 2i, and this vector here, which is 1j. We just add 2i plus 1j by the triangle law to get vector v. Suppose we multiply vector v by a scalar, and that scalar is 2. Well, as I explained in the first video, if we multiply a vector by a scalar, we just change its length. If, if the scalar is positive, the vector will point in the same direction, but its length will change. So, if we multiply this vector by 2, we're doubling the length of it. So we're going to get this vector here. Actually, this is the correct, I had the head in the wrong place. We get this vector, which is 2v. It's twice the length of v, but it's pointing in the same direction. The coordinates of this point here are 4, 2. So what we do is we just multiply 2 by each component. So we have 2 times 2 gives 4i, and 2 times 1 is 2j. So you can see vector 2v is got by adding vector 4i, which is this vector here. Remember, i is the unit vector, the vector of length 1 pointing to the right, horizontal vector. That, that's vector i, and we have 4 of them, so that's 4i, and we add on 2j, where j is the unit vector pointing upwards. If the scalar is minus 1, what we do is reverse the direction of v. If we multiply v by minus 1, we get minus 2i minus j. So we get minus 2i minus 1j. So the head of the vector has coordinates minus 2, minus 1. So we get this vector here. Minus v is opposite in direction to plus v, but it has the same length as v. Now let's consider vector addition. Suppose we wanted to add these two vectors, 2i plus 3i. Well, where is vector 2i? Vector 2i is here. We just go to 2 on the i-axis. Remember, vector 1i is got by going from 0 to 1 on the i-axis. So this would be vector 1i, or just vector i. So 2i is just a scalar multiple of 1i. Let's look at vector 3i. Well, 3i is just got by going to 3 on the i-axis. So this would be 3i. This vector here with a length of 3. If we want to add 2i onto 3i, since they're both pointing in the same direction, we're dealing with one-dimensional vectors. So in the, first vector, in the first video, I explained how to add them. They just add easily, they add algebraically, so we get vector 5i. So we get this vector here. We could also imagine combining these two vectors, 3j minus 4j. Vector 3j is here. It's a vector with a length of 3, but pointing upwards. 1j is the unit vector. Minus 4j is a vector pointing downwards with a length of 4. Vector minus j is a unit vector that's point, that points downwards. This will be at minus 1. That's minus j, and we multiply by 4 to get minus 4j. So to add these two vectors together, well, 
we just do this algebraically, 3 minus 4 is minus 1. We get the vector minus j. So the sum of these two vectors is, is minus j. Now let's look at these two vectors, v and w. v is the vector 2i plus j. w is the vector 3i plus j, which means that the coordinates of the head of it are minus 3 plus 1. Actually, this should be minus 3. Now, in the first video, I discussed the parallelogram law for the addition of two vectors. The two tails of these vectors are coinciding. What we do is we construct a parallelogram whose sides are vectors v and w. So we need to draw a line parallel to vector v over here. So we see vector v involves two steps to the right and one step up. So we go two units to the right and up one unit. And we complete this parallelogram. Then the vector v plus w is got by drawing in this diagonal. We can read off the coordinates here. We can see that this point has coordinates minus 1, comma 2, which means that this vector is minus 1i plus 2j. So we can do that by just counting squares here on this diagram. The very useful thing about using the ij plane to represent vectors is we can add them without using this diagram. So this is vector v and this is vector w. We just combine the i components together. We have plus 2i minus 3i, that's minus 1i. Then we combine the j components. We have plus j plus j, or plus 1j plus 1j is plus 2j. Let's suppose we want to calculate, get the vector v minus w. Well, we can just do it like this. We don't have to use a diagram. I'll explain what it means on the diagram soon. This is vector v and we want to subtract vector w. So I'll put vector w in brackets. So we have 2i minus minus 3i. That's 2i plus 3i or 5i. We have plus j minus j. That's actually 0. So we get 5i plus 0j or just a vector 5i. Now the vector 5i looks like this of course. It's five times the unit vector i, so it's a horizontal vector. As a matter of fact, it's this vector here, got by drawing in the other diagonal of the parallelogram. So this vector is 5i. Now, I've shown vectors v, w, and v minus w down here on a separate diagram, just to explain a little bit more about the difference of two vectors. That means what we get when we subtract two vectors. To see that this here makes sense, consider the addition of vector w with this vector here, v minus w. Consider the addition. So w plus v minus w gives us v. That makes sense. If we use the triangle law to add these two, two green vectors, well, we join the tail of the first green vector, which is w, to the head of this second green vector, which is v minus w, and we get vector v. So it makes sense that this other diagonal of the parallelogram is v minus w. In the parallelogram, this diagonal is the sum of the two vectors, v and w, and the other diagonal is the difference of the two vectors, it's v minus w.